we also decided that, you know, Peggy is Peggy Carter and Dottie is Dottie Underwood. Simba's name didn't really fit the theme of the house, but he knows his name and he responds to it. So we don't want to change it. So we decided his full name is Simba Buchanan Barnes because he has a troubled past and random outbursts, outbursts of violence. So. He's like kind of Bucky, but kind of not. He's like Bucky adjacent. It's probably a good thing you don't have kids. It's an excellent thing I don't have kids. <laughs> Because one, I would fuck them up royally. And two, like, they'd be lucky to ever get out the door for anything. Mom, why am I named T'Challa? Don't, don't, don't ask her that. Don't ask and your mother that. And cracked the fuck up at me the other night because Peggy just likes to go up to his gate when he's in his room and tell him off. And we're trying to stop her from doing that because it's freaking him out. And I finally, after yelling at her for like six times, I finally had fed up and I got put on the full mom voice and I, I yelled, Peggy Carter, Dina Han. And Dan fell off the couch. <laughs> he, was like, just, he was like, did you just, did you just call her by her full name? <laughs> He's like, and why is her last name Dina Han and not my last name? I'm like, because on the vet records, I usually take them. So she's Peggy Dina Han. <sighs> Anyway, so that's my adventure. So if I get up and run off suddenly, it's because my cat's trying to kill each other. Uh, We're going to hope that doesn't happen. Let's let's start the horror. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you. And as I have been saying all night leading up to this. Once again, we got to clinch it. Are we doing that first? Last. Uh, okay. this, is, this is just your prepare thyself. Okay. Because usually we work up to something like that. So the, if we were opening with it, I was like, this week's going to suck. There will be puckering involved. Oh, no, no, no. This this week is definitely going going to suck. Um, we Captain America cat. Did you just not listen to the last five minutes? I bring another cat in here. They're going to kill us in our sleep. But it would be an adorable murder. Yeah, but we'd be dead and you need right. a sidekick. Let's start with this again. This a uh, fucking again. Um drinking on the airplanes. Every time this happens, it just seems to get a little bit last week we had the dude peed on somebody from yeah. drinking. And I thought, you know, that's about as bad as it could possibly get. No. 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 Because this... Th you ever see that old Twilight episode? Oh, my God. There's a there's something on the wing of the plane. Yeah. William Shatner. Yeah. All right. It's like that, except drunk. Boozed up woman screamed, we're all going to die. As jet two plane circled over East Midlands Airport, leaving one terrified passenger having a fit. The drunk jet two passenger screamed, we're all going to die and caused a fellow traveler to have a fit on her flight back from Tenerife. Uh, so led Kieran Jagdiv. No, 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 no. That's not a name. That's an adjective. <laughs> Sozzled. Sozzled. Oh, okay. My bad. Thank you. I'm not, I am not from the UK. I did not know that was a word. Yeah. She was sozzled. She was proper sozzled. Well, she necked up to eight beers and six wines during the four hour journey and flirted with an off duty cop that tried to calm her down. 41 year old. The 41-year-old also continually kicked the seat of a 15-year-old autistic girl and caused her mom to have a seizure. Wow. She then started screaming when the plane was unable to go into land at East Midlands Airport first time and had to circle around. She admitted being drunk on an aircraft. The court heard how she downed six to eight beers before boarding the flight and then sank a further four to six glasses of wine while on the plane. Prosecutor Zoe Lee said the cabin crew could see she was intoxicated, to, refused to serve her any more alcohol, 
She was then seen to be drinking alcohol she had brought onto the plane herself. UIOB. After she, she became abusive, an off-duty police officer on the plane offered to sit next to her for the rest of the flight to calm her down. Miss Lee said, to start with, it sort of worked. Then she became flirtatious and he refused her advances. Then she became abusive and became much louder. You want to join the Mile High Club? No, man. Fuck you! <laughs> this woman's our age. What? I, I am the same age as this person. Yeah. After she was arrested, she told cops she had been in party mode and blamed the cabin crew for serving her alcohol. No. You brought your own fucking alcohol! Yeah, like, even if they hadn't served you, you brought your own. Were they supposed to confiscate that? Because I feel like you probably would have thrown a hissy about that, too. I just, 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 just speculating here. Okay, I have been... Th I uh, so many times in my life I've had to say this phrase. I have been very drunk over my lifetime. I've never been. Oh my God, we're all going to die in an airplane drunk. I mean, I'm like that sober because I really don't like flying. But, the, but you know, that's why I don't drink and fly. You white knuckle it. You white knuckle I, it. I drama mean and ginger ale it. I don't drink. Dan will usually have a couple of drinks on the flight, but Dan has the tolerance of a dwarf lord. So, like, he has two whiskeys on a flight and he can still drive us home from the airport. You, you probably shouldn't say that out loud over the internet, Tara. No, I'm not even kidding. And I was, think, I was just thinking the same thing. Like, he, he, he doesn't drink and drive, but he does have a ridiculously high tolerance. <laughs> like, two whiskeys is usually just like dinner. Uh, That's what he has when we go out to dinner. So like, and he's not buzzed at all. So like he, he legit has dwarf Lord tolerance. I'm, I, you know what? I don't care how many people are pissed off being drunk on a plane. No getting served alcohol on a plane. No, this, this keeps that. Why? For a reason, but you, you have to be a fucking grown up and police yourself a little bit. Well, how many of those are there anymore, Tara? Not many. Any, okay, anything you say, well, you have to be a grown-up. Anything immediately after that fails now. Yeah. It's kind of gone out of vogue, hasn't it? Yes. We've, we've, lost, we've lost our privileges on that one. Now here, I think you'll, you're going to actually enjoy this story because it is, this is, this is like, this is like some, like, either, I don't know if this, this is, yeah, this is fringe. This is kind of some fringe shit. I miss that show. It's weird how, how objects have context. An everyday object, if you take it out of its proper context, can cause anxiety and panic. Do you, have, did you ever, when you were a little kid, see one of your teachers out in public? Yeah, it's like. You're that not allowed fucks, here. That fucks you up. Like when you're when you're little, you think they live there. Yeah, you're like they let so you like, out. You run into your teacher at the mall, and your whole world is blown. You're like a real person. Yeah, like you do stuff. This did I? This this okay? I I'll admit if this happened, I would be a little confused too. Bizarre neighborhood. Bizarre neighborhood. Wake up. Wakes up to more than twenty vintage televisions on their front porch. Okay. Glen Allen neighborhood woke up Thursday to find dozens of vintage tele box televisions sitting on their front porches. Robin Shore told WTVR her husband found a Toshiba FST black stripe television dated February 1986 sitting outside their front door. Shore said she posted a photo of the TV on neighborhood discussion page where others said they also got a TV. Apparently down the road, they have lots of TVs delivered to their houses. Now, this is the part that's just kind of... <laughs> Someone took a leap here. Quote, people were calling them Trojan horses saying, don't put them inside your house. Who knows what can happen? 
Agreed. What? Really? There's either a camera in the speaker or a bomb in the tube. Fuck that. No. Absolutely not. Ah, the old vintage television bomb trick. I'm just saying. You don't put random ass appliances in your home when you don't know their origin. Unique Angel asks, who just has that many TVs? Do you know how many fucking vintage box TVs are just sitting around now? Like, what do you think happens to them? People don't. I mean, they're like literally millions of the goddamn things because we as humans have no concept what happens to things once we dispose of them. Like, we think just like the stuff I don't want anymore fairy comes and they blink out of existence. Like, no, there is a fucking ditch with 4,000 TVs in it within this, 10 miles of you. There are there are literally warehouses full of... We, we even have a term for it now. It's called e-waste. Yeah. There are warehouses full of old electronics because... These computers. We can't throw... We can't, You can't just throw them away because there are hazardous materials... And if you throw away in one landfill, if you throw away one TV, it's not going to be a problem. If you throw away 10 TVs, it's not going to be a problem. But we have millions of them yeah. with toxic. And they, all, and they all run on little amounts of toxic shit. And yeah, you can't just throw them. Yeah. So someone decide. Now, th this is what I'm trying. Someone went through the trouble. Of getting all of these televisions, putting them in a truck, and in the middle of the dead of night, driving through this neighborhood, and putting one on every single... And there's photos here. That's what I'm saying. A person that has the free time and the will to do something like that has the free time and the will to put some shit in that TV to fuck with you. So you're thinking... That's this, a crazy-ass person. You are like, this is some, this is some like super villain shit yeah this is like the joker or some shit or some fucking spy shit i i would not be quite that paranoid i would just put it in my truck drive down to the landfill and be like Can you do something with this shit i would throw that thing in the pool and <laughs> strap magnets to it for a week maybe set it on fire after that Dan would come home and be like, what the fuck are you? No, you don't see understand. See if I could get the Winchesters on the phone. <laughs> Exercise that motherfucker, some white sage. You gotta cover your bases. You don't know. But I, I kind of I kind of get this because who expects to walk out of their front door and there's a fucking vintage television on your porch? That would creep me out. It's just... Someone has way too much goddamn time on their hands. I'm, I'm like, too many TVs. is this like some kind of art installation? Is this your final thesis for group for art college or something? Like or anybody takes that TV in two nights from now, they're all going to spontaneously turn on and Max Hedrum is going to be on them. <laughs> And brainwash you to kill everybody or something. You've never actually seen Max Hedrum, have you? It was a long ass time ago. <laughs> Arkel's like Banksy did this, didn't he? That's it. That's it right there. It's fucking Banksy. He's being deep again. Oh dear. Oh, hey, this would happen again. God. You went Jersey for a minute there. Oh, way. It's from Florida. And we have to bring out the classic admonition. Your gun is not a remote control for life. Pasco man pointed rifle at party at pool partiers over noise. Zephyr Hills, a Pasco County man, was arrested Sunday night after deputies say he waved a rifle at some pool goers because he thought their music was too loud. If you look at the mugshot, he looks like exactly the kind of motherfucker that does this. He does indeed. Richard, Richard Savage. Richard fucking Savage. 
You know what's louder than loud music? People screaming because they're in fear for their life. According to the sheriff's office, it was around 8 p.m. when Richard J. Savage came out of his apartment, upset about the noise at the community pool. Not his pool, not his neighbor's pool, community pool. That shit happens, man. Probably about five minutes into it, my sister screams out, Rodriguez recounted. I just turned around and this guy was standing there with a weapon pointed directly at me. Deputies say Savage was carrying a rifle. At one point, they say he racked the slide, pointed at the group, demanded they shut it down before he headed back inside. What does racked the slide mean? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck so he chambered a round. Oh. Well, fuck him. Yeah. Um. You know what you can do when your neighbors are being loud? You can be like, hey, you think you could keep it down? Yeah, the first step is go ask them to please be quieter. I know you're trying to have fun. I'm not trying to be a dick. It's a little loud. Could you keep it down? The second phase after that, if, they, if they're like, fuck you, you call the police. There is a noise, noise complaint. I, don't know, I think second phase is keep it the fuck down. Keep it the fuck down. Oh. Phase three is call the police. Like, and no, not customer service. We do that shit too much. But like, you could just ask nicely. Yeah, you could just start with ask. At, at no point in any of this process is a goddamn rifle involved. So there was a ten year old at that party. Yeah, and you're pointing a fucking gun at a ten year old because they were playing their music too loud. And Savage, 52, was charged with aggravated assault and child abuse. Because guess Good. what? Just because you don't actually fire the gun, just because you don't shoot anybody, pointing a weapon, loaded or not, pointed a weapon at another human being can constitute assault. You don't get to do that shit. I, I, I think it's Pope Hat. If you don't follow... Uh, uh, and forgive me that I don't know his real name. Um, if you don't follow Popat on Twitter, he's he's a lawyer who who does all sorts of stuff online. One of the things he said was uh, something to the effect that uh, the law doesn't work how you believe it does. Yeah. Just that that it, just because you believe I didn't do nothing doesn't necessarily mean. You didn't or just do you nothing. think it's okay because you're you. Yeah. Uh, just if that I fucking see. gun had gone off. A rifle, t like, not that any kind of gun is okay to point at people at a pool party, but like. Yeah. You went all redneck grandpa on the front porch. Yeah, his name is Ken I'm White. Sure. Popat's actual name is Ken White. He's, he's. Trust me, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. Very informative. He's got his own website. Very smart guy. Um, your feelings are not the law. Thank you. That was the quote. But, yeah, it, your feelings are not the fucking law. What is it the Trumpers say? Fuck, Fuck your, your feelings. feelings. I think that's it, yeah. But coddle ours. I think that's what those t-shirts say. I think that's what the back says. The minute you're just using your gun for frivolous shit, I mean, I've got enough problems with guns as as it is, but the minute you're using it for frivolous shit, that's the minute you don't get to have a gun anymore. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. But I think we should have a lot less guns in general. I look forward to your YouTube comments. <sighs> let's, let's move. This one is... This one actually kind of amuses me because this dude thought he was being slick. Um, the problem with this is there are a lot more geeks in society than once there were before. And also, I don't understand why people think that they don't actually check your references on a job application because they... Oh, no. They do. Pilot fired after using Star Wars villain Jabba the Hutt as reference on application for the job. It doesn't even sound like a real name. No, well, we'll get to it. It's it's a little bit, a little little bit of a deep cut on the nerdiness. 
Nigel Francis McGann, 46, was accused of putting lives at risk with his bogus attempt to be a captain with cargo firm West Atlantic UK. In his CV, he put uh, Tzilic Tior, the real name of Jabba, as a reference. I didn't know Jabba had a real name. I thought Jabba was Jabba's real name. <laughs> so he thought he could be all sneaky and shit and be like, well, it's not like anybody else is a big Star Wars fan. Anyone. Anyone. They, they, it's it, not like Google is a thing. Right. Right. I mean, because the minute you type in that, I've never heard of this person. Let's see what their reference. Their job of the hut. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh. I mean, you don't even let's say like Tim, you don't even have to be a fan. You just Google the person's reference, and they're like, oh, oh. What was your job working for Jabba? Were you the little heckler, monkey alien, or did you wear the gold bikini? That was that was Salacious Crumb. Thank you very much. He has a name. He has sure. a name. He is sure. a person, and you should respect him. Okay. Yeah, that that little that little monkey had a name. By God, I honestly didn't know that until just now. I like Ray. <laughs> Ray's cool. Uh, I like BB-8. I just it. Ah, uh, yeah, how do you? They check. They they, they fucking check your references. They they do they do that. They don't they just don't them just for funsies. No, they're they, they look they read this goddamn stuff. I mean, it's how did although I do have to hand it to the sun being the upstanding bastion of reporting they are that they had to put the Carrie Fisher bikini shot in this story for no good goddamn reason. Obviously. I, why is it here? I, I don't. Salacious Crumb. Salacious Crumb. That name. That's not like you lost Mad Libs. Have you seen half of what George Lucas named people? It's like Salacious is like a scandalous, sexy rumor. Crumb. George Luke. Does that mean he's named after like the crumbs you get in your cleavage? George crumbs? George Lucas cast Christopher Lee, Christopher motherfucking Lee, in a Star Wars movie and named him Count Dooku. Yeah, he did that. And also. I'm going to go with salacious crumbs or cleavage crumbs. That's okay. what I've decided. All right. Uh, well, speaking of salacious, uh, this is from New York. You may have heard about this going around because apparently this is turning into a big scandal. Um, New York's housing authority has been a problem for a while. Yeah. I love how, I love how your first response is just, just start laughing about that. Oh, it's a hot mess. It's funny you use that phrasing, Tara. Overtime for orgies. Allegations. Oh. New York City Housing Authority staff after hours sex parties prompted sweep clean of workers at Bronx Development. Allegations of Housing Authority staff engaged in after hours boozed up sex parties prompted New York City Housing Authority to reassign the entire staff of a Bronx public housing development. Not fire, reassign. That's all right. I mean, they're just Catholic, probably. The parties included drinking and sex involving mm -hmm. supervisors and some of their subordinates. Uh, we don't want to... Uh, um, and took place on Fridays after normal work hours inside certain areas of the shop which is on New York City Housing Authority grounds. This is this is the best part. In some cases, the staff even put in for overtime. 
if I have to blow my boss on a Friday night, you better goddamn believe I'm getting time and a half for it. Unless I work for Chris Evans as his personal assistant, then I'll do that shit for free. Otherwise, yeah, I'm getting time and a half for that shit. Uh, Throgs Neck Tennis Association president Monique Johnson said during those hours, a lot of drinking and sex was going on. She said at one time, at one point, the uh, supervisors and staff used a sewer break as a cover story for their parties, claiming they were working on fixing it while they were actually partying. She said there is video and audio of staff engaged in sexual activity. Again, reassigned, not fired. Like, what if you just did this at somebody's apartment instead of at work? I know, right? You know, you know, okay. We might not all agree with this, but there is nothing legally wrong about a gathering of consenting adults all getting together at the same place. You want to have a drunken orgy? That is your fucking business. Yep. In your home. And don't fucking charge the fucking taxpayers. Right. To be fucking people. You are literally getting paid to fuck. That's not legal. And I mean, you're already getting paid to fuck people because the New York City housing, Ooh. half that half the shit doesn't work anyway. Half of them don't have heat. It's ridiculous. You're already fucking people for money. Like, <laughs> I'm just, how do, the, how are they still employed? Anybody out there watching right now, if you've got a nine to five, <laughs> nine to five. Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. If you've got an, like a, a job like this and you and everybody else in the fucking Dunkin' Donuts decides to start start having an orgy in the break room, y'all fired. Y'all immediately. If somebody gets that shit on video, y'all double fired. Yeah, probably. How are they not fired? How is I, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's a good question for Mayor de Blasio to answer. Uh, yeah. That this has kind of been the uh, the albatross around his neck, one of many, for his his uh his tenure as mayor. Nature has been a big old mess. Like and and he doesn't like the media, like de Blasio super hates talking to the fucking media. Like almost as much as the president does. I don't know how familiar y'all are with New York City politics, but he didn't like it. And uh, there's an NPR, the New York City NPR station, every Friday morning. He does like a half hour call in where people can call in and ask questions. And he gets real bitchy <laughs> real fast. I, so, how, would, how do you still, how do you do this and still have a job? And I want to I want to stress it's not the fucking I'm objecting to. It's the fucking on the clock. It's the fucking on the clock at the office. Overtime fucking no less. Which it sounds like the office is in the development. Uh -huh. Which means like people live there, man. Yeah. How, how the fuck do you you should know? Do that shit at home. Overtime fucking is you fired. That's the law. That's the rule. Unless that's your job. True. Yeah. Like if your job is you're a cam girl. That's your job. Good for you. But that wasn't their job, though. Right. If that's not your job, like if your job description does not specifically involve you fucking for money. Then you shouldn't be getting paid to fuck anybody and you shouldn't be fucking at your workplace. Yes. Uh, all right, we've we it's fine. It's time. Hang on. Oh, God. People, prepare yourselves. To, to, I don't even know how this. Oh my God, this is a cringer. And I'm not talking about He-Man's pet cat. This this is just a cringer. Ugh. Is that He-Man's pet cat's name? Yeah. I, I. Let's just, I, I can't, I have no, no good segue. I have no good lead up for it. Let's just jump right. Ah, that's not a good, that's not a good phrasing. Um, 
And I promise you, I researched, I did, I dug down on this. Wow. I should that's not, that's not a good cool phrasing either. Luke shit. I mean, yeah, literally, kind of. Man rushed to hospital after stuffing 15 hard boiled eggs up his bottom while high on drugs. Okay. The man was in critical condition after stuffing 15 hard-boiled eggs up his bottom while high on drugs. The 29-year-old man from the Netherlands, not been identified, was under the influence of GHB, common date rape drug, when he started boiling the eggs with his partner. When they were cooked and peeled, he decided to put them up his bottom. Like you do. Hey, those eggs, you know what? Those go in my ass. That makes sense. That's just science. That's, that's going to, that, that's a thing I should do right now. I mean, there's, there's a thing that, new agey women with too much money do where they will put an egg inside their vagina because they think it absorbs negative energy yes it's a thing like craig ferguson does a whole bit about it that they'll put an egg inside a chicken egg inside their vagina because it's supposed to absorb negative energy or something sometimes it's not a real egg sometimes it's made of like jade or quartz or something. Sometimes it's a real egg, depending on which flavor of crazy you are. But that is an organ made for things to go into. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. eggs, but. And you don't do 15 of them. You shouldn't even eat 15 hard boiled eggs. I, why? Off your tuchus. That you you can put things up that organ. I don't want to sound like, like, with proper lube and everything, fine. Shove anything up your ass you want. But science has given us things custom made. Right. We have done the research, people. We have done the engineering. We have and science on. If you're broke, just put a condom on a cucumber like everybody else. Like, and they, I mean, they shelled them. Yeah, which but, means they were squishy, which means you weren't just going to reach up and pull them back out because they're going to break up. I mean, because after like the first three, wouldn't the thought be, wait, what am I doing? Those are both. That's not a good drug. That's not a good drug. This is like the porn parody of Cool Hand Luke. <laughs> they don't. That's... The audience doesn't get this joke because they're all 12. But yeah. my dad made me watch this movie. It's a Paul Newman movie where I think he's in prison. Yes. And for some reason, at some point in the movie, like, there's a bet or something, and he eats, like, a do two dozen hard-boiled eggs or something. Wrong hole! Yeah. Yeah. I just... I, it's, he started getting... I mean, like, they're soft and squishy. Oh, well, here's the problem. He started getting stomach pains later that night, went straight to the hospital. One of the doctors said, upon arrival, the patient had tachycardia. Uh, the physical examination showed ab abdominal guarding over the entire stomach. Doctors carried out a CT scan as they suspected abdominal sepsis and found a perforation of the pelvic colon and a huge amount of air and fluids in the abdominal cavity. So that's going to be a lot of infection. Yeah, translation... He shoved so much stuff up his butt, he popped a hole. It burst. And when because that... hard-boiled eggs are squishy and soft, so they're not just going to go in a line. No. Like, they're not just going to pop up until they reach the stomach. They're going to squish and start to turn into Play-Doh. Fortunate. I want to I wanna stress, this guy's okay. He was in critical condition. He was in intensive care. Now he's as okay as you can be. He, he was yeah. he was discharged I mean, in lucky. He was discharged in good condition. 
but he's as good as you can be after you shove that much stuff up your butt. It's I'm trying, I'm trying to make the connection in my head and I can't make it work in a joke form, but like I've been rewatching all supernatural on Netflix and on the show, like not even just on the show, but you, like the lore is demons smell like sulfur, which smells like rotten eggs. And somewhere in my brain that, and you have to get out of here. Your rectum is haunted are trying to connect, but I can't find like the, that's, I got A and C, but no B. I, I just, it. Your rectum is possessed, I guess. I, what? You can't, you can put, you can't put that much in there. It's got a limit. And you should put things that are going to stay in one piece in there. Yeah. That's important. Whatever goes Go. in needs to come out whole. That's <sighs> really important. I, I'm amazed it took this long to happen. Goblin wrecked him, damn near killed him. Yeah, yeah, it did. It actually did. Literally almost did. Enough for you guys, whatever things you shove inside your body, unless it's food, they need to come out whole. You need to choose things that have the structural integrity to come back out in one piece in the same shape as you put them in. That's so important. Hot dogs, like a lot of chicks, shove a hot dog up there, half of it comes out. Now you got problems. I just, I cannot stress so much how much I'm just, the, the whole idea of stuff shoved up your butt until your intestines perforate, just, yeah. God, mother, whoa, that is too much. Don't just mm. that is that is one of the worst sepsis from your You're intestines. You're telling me there's a comic that says your vagina is haunted. That's what I was referencing. Yes, we 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 know. We are well no, aware. No. We are well. We are familiar with that. You got here about seven years too late. <laughs> we, we 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 know. Like how you get fifteen up there before you start questioning your decisions. That is a bad drug. Yeah, you shouldn't do that drug again. GHB. If you got 15 eggs up your ass before you even stopped to think about it. I want to stress, GHB, they took this shit voluntarily themselves. On Don't purpose. Do Don't do that. It's not a good drug. That's That's not a fun drug. That is a bad drug. And like... Were they boiling the eggs for this purpose? Or were they like, let's make egg salad? No, you know what? <laughs> let's toss egg salad. <laughs> That's not how you make egg salad, though. No. It might look like it once it's done, but it's that's done. not how you make egg salad. It's going to look like egg salad with hot sauce. Oh... Just, oh, just, it's, why, uh, I just have so many questions about the decision-making process here. Am I, the, and the answer is, the, that is a bad drug. Yeah. The first thing we learned this week, GHB is a bad drug. No one Don't should ever, drug, kid. no one should ever do that drug. Don't we, do that drug. We're certainly not saying don't do drugs because... But don't do that one. That's a bad drug. It's not a it's not a bad drug because it gets you hooked and it'll ruin your life and you'll start, you know, doing weird I mean, stuff for the front. That might be true as well. But this is a bad This is a cram 15 eggs up your ass drug. That's a bad drug. That's not a fun drug. In the immortal words of Natasha Romanoff, I don't see how that's a party. <laughs> Uh, we, we've, we've learned that, um, do, don't fuck on the taxpayer's dime. No. That's especially overtime because that's time and a half and that's, fuck you. Yeah. You're, you are not at the New York City Housing Authority to fuck. That's, that's not. Even if your name is Buck. We've learned that uh, just because you think your nerdy reference is going to slip under the radar, someone's going to Google that shit on your resume. Yeah. 
I, 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 phone number he gave for that person. What? Because what was the phone number he gave for that person? I don't know. I, you know he was thinking, I'm so slick. They're never going to figure so this I'm out. Slick. They're never going to figure this out. Anyone with Google could figure that shit out. I mean, I didn't know that. Fuck it. There's a... Don't even go near Wikipedia. It's 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 full of... They call it Wikipedia? It's called Wikipedia, yes. That's funny. That is funny. It's, it's yeah. a hellhole. I got roped into playing a Star Wars Trivial Pursuit game with friends once, and... I I kick ass at Trivial Pursuit because I know so much useless bullshit. Hmm. Star Wars Trivial Pursuit, though? That's a different kind of useless bullshit. I didn't know any of that useless bullshit. Like, any. Uh, any. We've learned once again, a gun is not a goddamn remote control for life. Just stop pointing guns at people. No. Just, if you really, 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 really need to just have that impulse, like, you know, that smokers have to chew gum because it's an oral fixation or something, hmm. get a super soaker. Just, if you just need to feel yourself cock something so that you can feel, like, big and strong, just uh, get a super soaker or a Nerf gun. We've learned not only do we have way too many old televisions, someone out there has way too much time on their hands. And is planning something. That is some weird shit. I would be creeped out, too. And finally, we've learned we are not grown up enough to allow booze on planes. No, apparently we're not. We're like, just not. As a species. Because last week a dude peed on somebody. This week, the lady fucking scream we're all that's something you you never scream we're all gonna die on a plane no that makes people like me very upset that's do you really want to start a panic on a tin tube because there's nowhere to go there's nowhere to go it's just uh... don't do that don't sepsis eggs stomach bad there was air in there too yeah not that, that good that is when you get air in your chest that's the bad time i mean i feel bad when i have to medicate simba and i get a little bit of air in his syringe and then he has burps like i feel bad enough about that <laughs> well at least you don't put it up his butt <laughs> 